Hey guys, how's it going? So uh, I wanted to go over how I set up my WoW characters for the Steam Deck. Uh, I'm not sure if this is the optimum way to do it, but this is a very good way to do it. And it's worked for me for multiple characters. Uh, obviously, there's some opinionated uh, add-ons and UI elements that I particularly enjoy. Uh, I encourage everybody to try them out, but if you have your own... UI that you like to use, uh, you'll you know easily be able to do that uh, with the steps th that I'm going to lay out here. So the first thing you want to do obviously is install Battle.net and World of Warcraft. If you haven't done that, there's tons of videos out there uh, on YouTube to do exactly that on the Steam Deck. I'm not going to go over the particulars of that in this video. Um, but once you have those installed, the first thing you want to do is uh, you'll need to open the game at least one time. And that will populate your WoW installation with interface folders and WTF uh, directory. So this is going to allow you to install add-ons. And add-ons are absolutely necessary for you to play WoW comfortably on the Steam Deck. So if you have never installed add-ons before, it's no big deal. I'm going to walk you through it. Um, and this is going to be pretty much plug and play. You're not going to be fiddling with a lot of stuff. You're, you're just going to be... Uh, sort of doing the initial setup, you're going to choose the keybinds that feel comfortable for you and you're going to be playing on the Steam Deck. It's going to be great, trust me. Okay, so what you'll need to do is uh, you have a browser installed on the Steam Deck. I personally use Firefox. Fortunately, uh, the two add-on managers that are the most popular, they have native Linux binaries. If you don't know what that means, it just means that you don't have to do anything special to install the add-on managers on the Steam Deck. The Steam Deck is Linux. It comes with versions of the programs that run on Linux, and they run perfectly great. I've never had a problem. Uh, so I don't know if this is still the case, but you know this is what I'm doing now. There was sort of a business issue with CurseForge, which is a repository for add-ons, and WowUp, which is an open source add-on manager. I'm not sure if that's revol resolved. I, I don't think it is resolved. So unfortunately for me and for this setup, you'll need to install both, which is not a big deal. Uh, so if you want to get the setup that I have, uh, the add-ons that you will need, uh, I'm going to go through them. Also, this uh, I'm streaming this to my Windows PC so I can record it, and the aspect resolution is a little different, so it's kind of cut off, but when we go into game mode, it's going to be completely fine. So what I got uh, is add-on skins. That's uh, important for some of the aesthetic looks. I think that you should get that. You're going to need to get big wigs. Um, I got all the big wigs for all the different expansions, you know, just in case there's time walking or something. Uh, you do not need click unless you're a healer. Uh, ignore that if you're if you're not a healer and you, and you don't want to use click. Details is the damage meter that uh, you're going to need to use for this UI setup. You cannot use another one. Uh, console port is the number one add-on that you need to get. You must get console port. That's what we're going to use and that's what's going to facilitate us to be able to play in handheld mode. Uh, on the Steam Deck. This is totally optional, gotta go fast. That's a Mythic Plus add-on. It's really good, I recommend it. Little Wigs, uh, I think that you absolutely need that. It's it's associated with Big Wigs, which is also not optional. Uh, Plater Nameplates is optional. I recommend you doing it. it this is going to, uh, this, this installation setup is gonna walk you through how to set up a profile for this off of, that somebody else has already made. So I. I, th I think that these are superior to the LVY nameplates, so you should get them. Uh, Shadow and Light is not optional. Shared Media, forget about that, you do not need that. Shared Media Causes is, is very good if you like to do Mythic Plus. There's a, a weak ore that, that uses this. It, it, it's very, very good, I, I recommend it. Uh, and weak ores is also not optional. You, you need to have weak ores for the setup that we're gonna go through. So that's on CurseForge. This is the CurseForge add-on manager. Unfortunately, because of the reasons I said before, uh, LVUI needs to be installed if you want to keep it up to date uh, through a different add-on manager, and that is going to be called WowUp. You can get it on WowUp.io. Just Google WowUp Linux or WowUp Steam Deck, and you'll get this app image. And you don't even have to install anything. App images on on the Steam Deck. I literally just click these app images that I've you know put in the documents folder. You can put them anywhere you want. Uh, you just click on those and, and, and the, the app's going to open up. So what you need on this is you need LVI. Okay, you have to get LVI. 
you have to get shadow and light. And I highly, highly recommend if you don't already have a UI that you are very familiar with, I personally think that Red Tusk UI is the best looking and most uh, functional, which is important, UI that you can get right out of the box. And this has an installation process. It's very, very easy to walk you through it. We're gonna go through it right now. Um, I highly, highly recommend that you get Red Tusk UI unless you already have something that you use that you think is better. Okay, great. Um, so what we're gonna do is we're going to open up World of Warcraft and I have chosen a character that I haven't set up on the Steam Deck yet. Uh, this is my evoker, Pizza Lizard. He's a max level character, so we're going to go through all the key binds uh, that you can possibly have and walk you through the process. So what you're going to see now is on the screen, after you've install all those, installed all those add-ons, it's going to pop up with an installer uh, that's configured with all of the add-ons we just showed you to just work seamlessly with all the add-ons we've installed to make the UI look very good and it's going to work together with console port uh, to make it very very easy for you to play on the Steam Deck. So once this loads, you can't see the loading bar because of the aspect ratio issue but we're not going to need to do that. I think it's taking a long time because I'm in uh, Valdraken which is the uh, Dragonflight hub. Okay, so you can see I have not logged onto this character, I think with in 10.1 at all. Um, okay, so this is not a <laughs> the right character for me to show you because apparently uh, I have uh, logged in with this. So let's log out and pick another character. Okay, so I guess I've already looked at that. So I'm, I'm sure that I haven't uh, ran with my my hunter right so the hunter uh, he's not max level but he, I think he has a it's gonna be a, a good candidate And this is about the same load times that I get on my PC, and I'm running WoW off of a microSD on the Steam Deck. The, this is not an outrageous load time, in my opinion, for WoW. I have an NVMe uh, solid-state drive on my PC, and it's not much better than this. Um, and you got to remember that this is probably loading up the installer. This, so this is what I'm talking about. So you're going to get hit with this when you first uh, log into a character after you just installed all the add-ons we talked about. So I'm going to skip this process because I've already gone through it, but you're going to press continue and you're just going, it's, it's very simple. You just click enable, enable, enable. It's no problem. So we're going to get another reload and you can already see the next step we're going to do. It, it prompted us already about which nameplates we want to use. And if you aren't familiar with that, what nameplates are, are the health bars over enemies' heads. Those are called nameplates. Your player frame and the target frame, those are called unit frames. So. You know, it's kind of like just the nomenclature that they use, but uh, Plater replaces the unit frames, the help, excuse me, the nameplates on enemies. Okay, so I'm going to use Plater, and I highly recommend that you also click Plater here. Uh, you can always change it later, but uh, I'm going to click Plater. That, that's what I think is the best. And we're already almost done. So you're going to have a couple more clicks because you're not going to skip that process, but uh, the longest part of this is just as the the UI reloads. It's it's uh, it's enabling uh, the add-on profiles that we just went through. So you're going to see what Red Tusk looks like now. So Red Tusk looks like this. Um, no, it doesn't. That's not what Red Tusk looks like. So you're gonna you're just gonna look better. But what I'm gonna do is the first thing I need to do is click on this is details right here. Damage done. I'm gonna go to the options panel. I'm going to go to Profiles. The profile name is going to be called Red Tusk UI. You will have this also. And there you go. It automatically enabled it. So I'm going to, I like to change this to Healing because I like to see what the healers are doing. Healing done. 
So we have damage and healing done. So now this UI looks like crap. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna type in LVUI and LVUI is gonna pop up. I'm gonna to go to profiles and I'm gonna click Red Tusk DPS. So yours is gonna be called Red Tusk, I think. I just renamed this because I have a little bit of special stuff in there. Okay, so now we have Red Tusk UI. So the last thing you're gonna to need to do is you're gonna to need to type slash BW into the chat bar and this is for big wigs. And what you wanna do is you wanna to go to the profile for big wigs. You wanna select Red Tusk. Actually, I lied, there's another step after this. And you're gonna close. And that's, you, you know, you'll see what that does as you play. It's, it's gonna automatically look very nice on the screen. So the other, we, we wanna do two other things. Okay, so if you remember, we uh, are gonna use the Plater profile and the default Plater profile, I'll show you what it looks like. In my opinion, it's, it's not the most aesthetically pleasing uh, profile out there. So I'm gonna go to the target dummies. It's hard to, okay, so that's what the, what the default player profile looks like. So what I would recommend is you go to WAGO and you click on World of Warcraft, player nameplates, Okay, and there's a bunch of stuff here. Okay, I just click on Plater. Hopefully that loads. Plater profiles, right? And here's a bunch of Plater profiles and they tell you about themselves. So pretty much all of these that have like thousands of installs, they are good, okay? So I personally have used Jundies before and I think that it is very good. I, all you do on this is, you, so you click this one and you're gonna hit the import string bit here. Once this loads, import string, right? So I click the, I have already done this. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna to go to, you're gonna type slash plater in chat. And then the profiles is right here in the third row. You're going to open profiles. You're gonna import the profile. I've already done this. So you import the profile, you paste it in here and you click okay, right? I have already done that, so I'm gonna click this. I'm gonna to go to Jundies, which we just looked at. It's gonna ask me if I wanna reload. I'm gonna say yes. Yes, I wanna reload. I don't know if you can hear the fan, it's kind of pumping a little bit in uh, desktop mode here because we have so many applications open. Okay, so in my opinion, this, you know, this looks much better to me, in my opinion. <laughs> you know, I can see a lot better. I think the nameplates are look very nice. Um, and we're gonna do one other thing. So. Some people don't like weak ores. I personally like them. What what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to also go here on Tawago. I'm going to click on weak ores. We have a hunter, right? So I'm going to click hunter. Um, so let's just see which one looks pretty good. Afinar, Effies. I'd say this one looks very nice. Hmm. Yeah, that's fine. Let's get this one. So again, we're going to copy the import string, right? Now we're going to type slash WA. So mine takes a little bit to load because I have, you know, 1700 weak auras. Uh, this does not happen every time you open, right? So once this loads, I can open it again, no problem. I'm going to import. Whoops. I'm gonna paste our weak aura so it knows what we're doing. And you can see it popping up here. It's, it's populating the weak aura that we have. And what we'll probably do is we'll probably wanna change the scaling because uh, these are normally configured for 1080p screens and the the Steam Deck is effectively 720. It's slightly different, but it's basically that. Okay, so that's actually pretty big. Uh, that does not look bad at all. So let's see if we even need to scale this. So what I'm gonna do is, is you, I'm gonna hide all this other stuff, right? Um, 
I'm only going to look at this. It looks like there's a ton of stuff in here. Jeez. Uh, okay, so it looks like we can safely do that. So what you do is you, you, you want to make sure you're on Luxthos, the top directory, not these subdirectories. And I'm just going to click the group scale, and I'm going to scale it up just a couple clicks like this, and I'm going to move it up just a bit. That was down. Hmm, they're both moving it down? Okay, that's up. Okay, so I think that that looks, you know, not very, not, not that bad at all. So let's see. So that looks great in my opinion, right? I can still see my character when I'm zoomed out. It's big enough for me to see in handheld mode. I, I actually like that a lot. Okay, so now uh, you're gonna make, sh wanna make sure you exit the game. So we've got all of our profiles set up, everything. And now we're gonna go into game mode. Um, and I'm gonna show you how we're gonna configure our console port bindings and I'm going to talk a little bit about some custom stuff that I've got going on here um, that I think you, you might want to consider because it, in my opinion it, it's it's pretty nice so yep we're going to go over to console uh, game mode so uh, I'll see you in a second okay so here we are we are now in game mode um, and I'm just now loading into that hunter that we configured so you'll see we have the exact same uh, UI that's about to pop up hopefully if this will load Man, this is really chugging, huh? Okay, so there we go. It looks exactly the same. It's The aspect ratio is a little different, uh, possibly, but I think it's because uh, I'm plugged into my monitor and I've, I've had some issues with the aspect ratio changing. Okay, so now uh, one thing that you should do is you can use um, the default controller layout. You don't need to change the controller layout at all to do all these things. And if you press the uh, start button, I guess it's called, in the Steam Deck, uh, you can see that console port is, is already uh, working with us. So what I do is you're going to go to controls. Right now I'm going to use the keyboard or mouse just because it's it's already plugged in and it's very convenient, but you can absolutely do this with, with the controller. Okay, so uh, I'm not a hunter expert by any means, but we're going to go into bindings and we're, we're going to figure it out. So I uh, have moved a couple of these bindings around on accident. Uh, the default is much more organized than this. Uh, but yours is going to look generally like this, okay? So if you don't have keyboard and mouse set up, what you can do is you just use the D-pad here. And so for the A button, uh, I think it's called like Viper Shot or something like that, I'm going to add what, what I tend to do, this is a little annoying here, uh, is I put the most used spell here. Now normally it's jump. Normally A is, I should actually go over that. Normally A is jump. So what you're going to do is, what I do, as I go to controls, I go to, let's see, general, uh, how do I do this? Yeah, jump here. So I change jump to something else, to one of the back buttons. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna free up your A button to not be jump. Now, I recommend you you do that. Uh, a is like the best real estate in the entire controller and jumping, you can do that with one of the back uh, triggers and, and I, I very, very highly recommend that you you also uh, have it set up that way. In my opinion, it, it's, it's far superior. So I'm going to set up A, A, with, I think, is it Beastmaster? Yeah. So this is like the you know normal spam filler spell. Okay, so now that's Cobra Shot. So I like to make B my common uh, spell I also use, right? So I think Binding Shot is pretty good. You hit that you hit that very often, um, and you're gonna want to keep up that buff. So I think that's you know pretty good. Like I'm like I'm saying, if you if you need to be able to move and cast something, and it's a very common spell. You're going to want to put it on the uh, most available bindings, which are A, B, X, and Y, right? A is, is the, the best one, right? So you want to put the best thing there. So what could X be? Let's see. X, what do they press? There's like kill, yeah, so kill command is you, you spam that. Uh, so we're going to do kill command there. And for Y, your Y is probably going to be somewhere more sane. I, I think I messed that up and put it there on accident. Uh, we're going to do not bestial wrath. That's a 1.5 minute cooldown. Uh, what else is very common? 
kill shot, right? That, you know, kill shot happens a lot. I think that's, uh, that's probably a pretty good bet. And then for what I do, you know, obviously you can do your own thing, but I put my cooldowns, my offensive cooldowns on the D-pad because those are also highly accessible, right? So left is the one that's closest to my, it's easiest for me to press. So I'm going to put the best cooldown on there that I'm going to hit often, right? So I'm going to put Bestial Wrath on there. I'm going to be hitting that thing all the time. So jamming on that button. Disengage is obviously not going to be on there. Uh, what else is another cooldown that they have? This, I think. That's a defensive cooldown. So now you're sort of seeing my ignorance uh, with respect to to hunters. Hmm. Let's put this here. Uh, what else is good that hunters have? Stealth is going to go somewhere else. Aspect of the turtle, I'm going to put on my special uh, block over there. I'll show you how I set that up. Um, I, th I, I think that that's you know a pretty good thing to have. I don't know how often you hit Hunter's Mark as a Beastmaster, but we're going to put Hunter's Mark there. That seems pretty fine. Okay, then for me, I always, on every single character, uh, for right bumper, which is right here, I put Interrupt. Always. So no matter what character I'm playing, I know that... Uh, where's Interrupt? this if I hit that it is going to interrupt the target right so if I'm you know multi specking and going jumping around I don't have to you know think about it I just hit that button and then for left bumper I often put a single uh, target CC on there if I have one so if I recall correctly the hunter has like confusion shot or something I forget what it's called mm, I must not have specced into it Let's just put body shot, whatever. You know, that's a CC, cool. Okay, so then if you hold left trigger, you see all the bindings change. So what I put on left trigger A is I often have another maintenance buff on there. So like on Vengeance, I have Demon Spikes. On Fury Warrior, I have uh, Whirlwind. If I need to maintain a buff. Now you could probably say that binding shot could go there, but Hunter doesn't seem to have that many bindings. So I think B is a little bit better real estate and I can put something slightly less used on uh, left trigger A. Uh, so let's think about it. Where's left trigger A? Left trigger A for me is right here. It'll probably be somewhere more sane for you. Um, what do hunters use a lot that I haven't already used? Oh, this. Chakram, death chakram. That seems pretty good. Uh, so anyway, you can kind of see the process that I'm going through, right? I'm just, I'm just deciding what I is very good to hit, and, and, I, and I put those in the best spots, and then I put the things that are less good in uh, less good spots, as far as you know, ease to get to. But you know, once you get the muscle number down, it's all gonna be the same, and you're gonna be smashing. Uh, so what I do here is on right trigger, I put my movement abilities. So for right trigger A, I'm gonna put disengage. I think that's the main hunter movement ability. And then for right trigger B, which is somewhere dumb for me. It's probably somewhere much nicer for you. Is that right, Trigger B? I'm going to put Aspect of the Cheetah because that makes you move fast. Um, and then what I'm going to do here is this. I'm going to show you how I, how I set this up, right? But what this is, is I did this when I was setting up Brewmaster, and I like it a lot. And what it is, it's, it's my right trackpad is what's called a virtual menu. And I've bound these to the numpad uh, Key bindings. You can be whatever you want as long as they're not already in use. And this is just another ease of use that gives me four more buttons, right, to hit things that I hit very often. So what I've done here is I always, always, always put my trinket. Let me put this here. Maybe put this there. Okay, we already have that. We already have that. We already have that set up. Do I even have a trinket on this character? Yes. So I put that on use trinket right there. I'm, I'm aware that Solia's secret techniques on use trinket. I'm not going to set that up right now. Um, the ones that you need to target friendly party members are still something that I'm configuring. Uh, why does feign death there? I think that feign death would actually be pretty good over here. That's actually not a bad thing to put. And then I usually on A, uh, or I forget, maybe it's I put it on X. 
I put uh, Warlock Stones on X. Do I have one? I do not have a Warlock Stone. So when I meet a Warlock, I'll get one. But I usually put Warlock Stones there, right? So maybe here I could put... Um, what else is very useful? You can. You know, I seem like an idiot right now with how little I know about hunters, and I chose a hunter to show you guys. Um, not flare. Hmm. Crank shot. Sure. Why not crank shot? Okay. I also want to put stealth, right? I usually if if a if a class has stealth, I put it on right trigger Y. So like I put uh, Prowl and stuff like that. Um, so right trigger Y is going to be stealth. Yeah. OK, great. So um, I have a bunch of keyboards and stuff over here with all this recording set up. But let's mess around a little bit and see if we can do our rotation and not, not embarrass myself so badly. OK, so I think what you want to do is you hit binding shot. Oh, you know what you need is I need multi shot. That's what I need. That's what I'm missing. Multi-shot's the big thing that everybody presses. So I think multi-shot should be left trigger A. Yeah. Multi-shot's gonna be left trigger A. I think I'm actually pressing something on my Steam Deck. Oof, I have too much crap here. Controls. Hmm. Oh, I'm in combat. That's what's going on. I think this kills my pet. I don't. I don't. I need. I don't have pet cancel macro here yet. So, let's see. Defensive, passive. Where's move to me? I guess he's just dead or something now. <laughs> okay. Uh, cool. Controls. Left trigger A. So we're gonna move chakram to left trigger uh, X. We already have that bound. And left trigger A is going to be multi-shot, which is this. Cool. And you know what I should put here is, well, let's do left trigger. Uh, OK, so that's revive pet. So do I, the pet's already revived. So that left trigger up maybe could be men pet. That's like a little foot or something, right? What's this? Pet utility. How do you heal the dang pet? There is a button for that. Battle pet. I thought it was this. Hmm. Not that. How in the heck do I save my pet? Re revive pet. Is it just one button now? It's been so long since I played Hunter, y'all. We're going to open the spell book. Pet utility. This is it. Feed. Tame beast. Revive. What? So my pet's not dead, but it's... Okay, whatever. I guess this is just the way it is. All right, let's try. So we're gonna try to, to disengage. Okay, that was dumb. We're gonna do cheetah, test out stealth, all that works. Okay, so I'm gonna use beast cleave, barb shot. So my pet is gone. I don't know where my pet is. He's just gone. Okay, well this is not a Steam Deck issue. This is a me being an idiot issue. Uh, binding shot. Nice, what else do I have? Hmm. 
Dead Trank Shot, Curse Trap, Tar Trap, Death Chakram. Yeah, so you can smash with this, okay? If you're not an idiot like I am. So I'm gonna jump. Jump, disengage. Okay. Cool. So that's that's uh, basically it. I'm gonna go over a little bit about the uh, the trackpad, uh, touchpad, virtual menu here. But this is basically how you can set up your your character. You're gonna obviously be a lot better at me with with the hunter when you are with your main character. You know what the spells are and stuff, just like I do with my main. But this is the basic gist of it, and you're jamming, right? Uh, I love playing like this. I think that this UI looks very good. Um, you can see the frames are 30 here, but that's just in Valdraken. They're, they're much, much, much better uh, in other parts of the world. So if I just go down here, right, I'm already, you know, at 50 frames or something like that because there's not, you know, a thousand million people. So I'm at 60 frames consistently here. Um, let's kill this thing with our new. Where is, my, I don't know how you revive, get, it, get your pet back. I think I have to summon my pet. This is really bothering me. Um, anyway, but uh, I'm going to do a small little bit about uh, this trip. Maybe I'll save that for another video uh, since this is going very long now. But uh, good luck, and let me know in the comments if, you, if I've left anything out that you need me to re-explain.